We begin tonight with the historic verdict. For the first time, the child of a sitting president has been convicted of a felony. Hunter Biden found guilty on all three felony counts for lying at a federal forum about his drug use when he bought a gun in 2018. Hunter Biden had that gun for 11 days. His candor about his battle with addiction used against him in court. After the verdict today, Hunter Biden seen leaving the courthouse holding his wife's hand and holding the first lady's hand as well. Jill Biden was there every day but one as her son was on trial. Tonight here, we take you inside the jury room, two jurors and what they reveal to ABC News, that the jury at first was split right down the middle, 6-6 on whether to convict. So what changed overnight, deliberating two hours this morning and then convicting on all counts? Tonight, President Biden issuing a statement saying, I am the president, but I am also a dad. Jill and I love our son and we are so proud of the man he is today. Adding that so many families who have had loved ones battle addiction understand the feeling of pride seeing someone you love come out the other side. Late today, you see right there the president greeted in Delaware by Hunter, his wife, and the president's grandson, Bo. So tonight here, what does Hunter Biden now face at sentencing? Dan Abrams is standing by. And ABC's Terry Moran interviewing those two jurors and what they've revealed. Terry is at the courthouse in Delaware. After three hours of deliberations, the jury in Hunter Biden's federal criminal trial reached a verdict. The defendant raced back to the courthouse to hear guilty on all three felony counts for lying about his drug use on a gun application in 2018 and for possessing a gun while abusing drugs. The first ever criminal convictions for the child of a sitting U.S. president. At first, Hunter Biden appeared stunned when he heard the word guilty. Then he nodded, patted his lawyer on the back and hugged his legal team and his wife. Moments later, Hunter walked out of the courthouse, hand in hand with his wife Melissa on one side and his mother, the First Lady, on the other, determined to show her support. The First Lady was in that courtroom nearly every day of the trial, missing just one day for the D-Day ceremonies in Normandy before flying right back to Delaware. Minutes after court adjourned, a statement from President Biden acknowledging the verdict. I am the president, but I am also a dad. Jill and I love our son, and we are so proud of the man he is today. So many families who have had loved ones battle addiction understand the feeling of pride seeing someone you love come out the other side and be so strong and resilient in recovery. And I will always be there for Hunter and the rest of our family with our love and support. Nothing will ever change that. Moments after the verdict, I met with juror number 10 in the garage. He revealed a remarkable scene inside the jury room when they started deliberating. A jury split right down the middle, six and six. Believe it or not, it was a split vote. Six, six. Six, six. That was the first vote. That was the first vote. But all that changed when they talked it over. Juror 10 says Hunter Biden knew he was an addict when he filled out that background check. Some of the critical evidence for him, Hunter's own text message sent the day after he bought that gun, saying he was waiting for a dealer named Mookie. If you're an addict, you're an addict. Right. This is something that sticks with you for the rest of your life. So you didn't buy the notion that for those few days around the purchase of the gun, he wasn't abusing drugs? No. Not at all. Juror number eight, Elijah Lewis Guy, agrees. For you as juror, what was the most important evidence for you? The important evidence was the, the form. What he put down in the form at that moment and knowing his history that he was and that he was a... Uh, a uh, user addict. And as for the historic nature of this trial? You do know that you convicted the president's son. How do you feel about that? I don't care. I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's, un it's unfortunate that he's convicted, but him being the son is not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that he did a bad thing and actions have consequences. Today, the special counsel who led the investigation into Hunter Biden, the U.S. attorney appointed by former President Trump and kept on the case by the Biden administration, said even Hunter Biden isn't above the law. This case was about the illegal choices defendant made while in the throes of addiction, his choice to lie on a government form when he bought a gun and the choice to then possess that gun. President Biden also said today he will accept the outcome of this case and will continue to respect the judicial process as Hunter considers an appeal, echoing what he told David last week in Normandy. 
As we sit here in Normandy, uh, your son Hunter is on trial, and I know that you cannot speak about an ongoing uh, federal prosecution. But let me ask you, will you accept the jury's outcome, their verdict, no matter what it is? Yes. And have you ruled out a pardon for your son? Yes. Tonight, the president arriving back in Delaware, greeted by Hunter and his wife and their son, Bo. For Hunter Biden, it was a long day of reckoning. He faces a maximum of 25 years in prison, though experts say he's unlikely to receive anything like that. And it was also for a man who says he has finally made it out from the darkness of his addictions, a day of gratitude. I am more grateful today for the love and support I experienced this last week from Melissa, my family, my friends, and my community than I am disappointed by the outcome. Recovery is possible by the grace of God, and I am blessed to experience that gift one day at a time. So let's bring in Terry Moran at the courthouse again tonight. Terry, I wanted to go back to your interviews with those jurors. It was really a quite revealing today. When they started deliberations, they indicated to you that the jury was split right down the middle on whether to convict. Uh, then returning this morning, deliberating for two hours or so, and coming to a unanimous decision to convict on all charges. So what changed? Well, David, on that first 6-6 six, six vote, we're told uh, that some of the jurors just wanted to make sure they took a good, hard look at the evidence and the law. And the final issue, it turned out, was the one the defense raised. Did Hunter Biden knowingly lie on that federal form when he bought that gun? The jurors took a look at that and the evidence, and they decided he did. David? Terry Moran interviewing those two jurors tonight. Terry, thank you. Let's get right to our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. And of course, Dan, everyone wants to know what Hunter Biden uh, potentially faces here. And then what's the most likely scenario? Facing up to 25 years, but more likely would be no time at all. And it's going to be interesting to see whether the special counsel even asks for any prison time. When you listen to his press conference today and you read between the lines, it sounded like he may not even ask for prison time. That'll be a critical question is what does he decide to request from the judge? You said something earlier while we were on the air for the verdict that was intriguing. You said you look back at cases, very rare that there would be felony charges when the gun itself isn't used in connection with another crime. Right. I haven't been able to find another federal case where there was only one gun. The gun wasn't used in connection with another crime. There were no other crimes committed and the person had no criminal record. But that doesn't mean as a technical matter that he's not guilty and the scrutiny that comes when you're the son of a president. Absolutely. Dan Abrams with us tonight. Dan, thank you. President Biden, as I mentioned off the top tonight, uh, with his son Hunter in Delaware. Let's bring in Rachel Scott live at the White House. Rachel, as we were on for the verdict, President Biden's statement first crossed. You were reading it on the air, uh, making it very clear how the president plans to handle this uh, deeply personal moment for the Biden family. Yes, David, and the president is acknowledging tonight that his son, Hunter Biden, has battled addiction and has made it out on the other side, noting in his statement that it's something that many American families go through. The president has really tried to keep his distance from this case, but tonight he does say that he loves and supports his son, Hunter, and also that he does ultimately respect the outcome of this verdict. It's a sharp contrast to his rival, former President Donald Trump, who continues to insist that the justice system is being weaponized against him, and it's a sign, perhaps, of what's still to come in this campaign. Donald Trump has yet to comment on the guilty verdict of Hunter Biden, David. Rachel Scott at the White House. Rachel, thank you.